You're listening to the Colby Cheese Gaming Podcast, your source for League of Legends news, updates, and discussions. Today is podcast number 25. Hey, what's up guys? Kobe Cheese here for another one of my podcasts. I did skip last week's podcast because I wanted to wait for the patch to come out so I could talk about that in addition to some of the esports stuff that happened last weekend on top of that. However, hopefully you guys don't hate me too much for that. I also have a lot of really cool links to share and just a couple of things to go over as well as a lot of uh, non-League of Legends related gaming to talk about. Since it is the holidays coming up soon, there's so many awesome games scheduled for release and I want to talk about some of the plans for my channel as uh, as the, you know the next few months come up and that sort of thing. So IEM New York was last weekend's event and it was pretty interesting the way it worked out. So the event prior to this, US actually took the first place spot. However, in the semis, we had three European teams. We had Cypher, SK, and Fnatic, and CLG being the only American team to make it to the semis, which was very interesting. It was a big turnaround, and a lot of people, including me, felt like I think Dignitas was a big team to beat in this competition. So it's pretty interesting to notice that they did not make it that far. CLG, where they had some problems in the past with you know a few of their players... Uh, not really synergizing as well together and, and GG kind of being out of practice a little bit. It's nice to see that they're, they're getting it together and they did make it way back up there. Unfortunately, they did not take that win for US, but congratulations to EU. Fnatic does take the uh, number one spot there. And it was overall a pretty exciting tournament. Lots of crazy stuff going on. So the power struggle continues. Speaking of power struggle though, somebody, one of my fans sent me this really cool artwork they did of what they call the Powerpuff Legends. So if you've ever watched the Powerpuff Girls, you'll know what those look like, but they've actually drawn those up here using Lux, Kenarina, and Akali. I thought this was hilarious since this is one of those old Cartoon Network uh, shows, so definitely check out that artwork. It looks pretty nice. I wish you would do more of these. That's pretty funny. So we recently had a new patch, new champion release, Graves the Outlaw. Pretty cool champion, actually. I'd say borderline OP. He's actually really strong the way he can dash in and attack so fast as well as burst people down in a nice big AoE. If you want to check out my impressions video of him, you can definitely do that. But let's talk about some of the other changes that were released in the patch because there was some pretty interesting stuff they did on the other champions. And so one thing I did notice is I had been playing a little bit of Gangplank. They really kind of tweaked his raise morale quite a bit. His movement speed and attack damage were hit quite heavily from what it was prior. Now, and by say by saying heavily, it's about six points on the movement and the attack damage at max level, but still it's uh it's a noticeable amount. I mean they've they've been slightly tweaking gangplank here and there, and that's one of his main abilities since that does uh, go across every single champion. So if you were to, you know, six times five people, that's a pretty big number. They made a few changes to Corky, I believe, to try and normalize him a bit instead of uh, instead of making him scale as much and more of a base damage. So I'm not really sure this helped him out or hurt him. I don't think it was much of a change at all, to be honest. I know Corky hasn't been seeing much play lately, and the reason for this is because of the fact that they took away that blind. I've been talking to a lot of Corky players, and I think that's the main one. Corky used to be really strong in the lane against other AD carries because of the fact that he can blind them, and he would win most confrontations due to that. It's almost like popping a uh, Jax dodge proc, you know, so... Once they took that away, it really shut down how good Corky was compared to other actual carries out there. So right now, that's why you're seeing all these Caitlyn's and other champions that are just outclassing him. And you don't really see Corky at all in competitive play anymore. Another big one was they changed Skarner up quite a bit. They gave him a lot more attack speed, scaling into the late game. They have Crystal Slash Mana reduced. That's a big one as well. So it went to 15 
which is halved from its max level rank. So it's much more spammable. It makes him more viable in the jungle. He could potentially even top lane quite well now. And another crazy one is that Fracture will now heal Skarner if Fracture kills its target. That's a big one because now you can run up to the Wraith camp and you'll be able to heal off of all of those Wraiths when you kill them. And that's going to make him much, much more viable into the jungle and give him more sustainability so he can run out there and gank. I do also feel like the... Increased duration on Impel is a pretty big thing. It's only 0.25 seconds. However, any amount you can get on an ultimate that not only suppresses but drags an enemy towards you is a big, big amount. So I've noticed Skarner being kind of a big problem. And as as he goes into the late game, he can be a, just a complete monster. He has so many different uh, abilities that give him steroids. And that's, that's what really determines how strong somebody's going to be in the late game with some big items. We may have to see him play it a little bit more. I don't know if he's actually going to be like really strong now or just more viable. And that's what I'm guessing is he's just going to be more viable. I don't think he's going to be necessarily like top pick or or overused or anything like that. But, you know, again, we'll have to see. He's not the champion that I personally play a lot. I have seen some players do really well on him recently, however. I feel like another big one was the change to that Hextech Gunblade. There are several champions that make really good use of that. So rather than nerfing the champions, then they actually nerf this item, which which conversely does nerf the champions. So Akali and Jax and even Katarina all get hits because of the uh, reduced damage and lifesteal and everything from Gunblade. Gunblade is considerably less and it's still going to be the same cost. So I don't know if it's still going to be the weapon of choice for those champions or if it will be, it's just going to completely uh, lower the, I guess, strength of those champions. So Akali definitely going to be uh, lowered in viability or they're just going to change her back to her old school, you know, maybe the, the Rage Blade and the Lich Bane build or something like that. I don't know. I, I was never an Akali player before she got popular. So... For the most part though, I think that's uh, an interesting change to that Gunblade. Sometimes you don't have to nerf champions, you just have to nerf the items that they're using. So I think Riot might have made the right decision on that and we'll see how it plays out. That's really it for the changes into the patch. Other than that, it's, you know, Halloween time, so we've got all the really cool Halloween skins. Well, I've seen a lot of Nidalees being played lately because everyone seems to really love that new Nidalee Bewitch skin. Throwing out those broomsticks with the spears on them are pretty awesome. And then the fact that you can also... I don't know if I enjoy the the changes to the uh, the the images on the health potions, the, the new, like, candy corns and stuff like that. But whatever, it is what it is, right? Nonetheless, though, pretty cool stuff. Speaking of cool Halloween skins, though, here's a little video cartoon thing I found, which would be a hilarious skin for Mundo if, you know, if there were no copyright issues, and it's called Johnny Mundo. I'm pretty sure you guys remember that cartoon. Check this one out. Where are they at? So in some other news, I don't know if you guys got the email or heard about it, but Riot's actually going to be freeing up inactive names on the 30th of the month. So if there's a name out there that you want to get, but it's already in use and you realize that it's like some level one summoner and it's never been played, then once the 30th is passed, they're going to reset all of those names that have not been played in like a while. So it'll allow players who are trying to get those new names uh, a chance to get those. And uh, in, in any case, if you have a name that you are holding because it's like a, an alternate version of your own name or something like that and you don't want people to smurf you, then you should definitely go play at least one game on there so that it does not get deleted. So we also had the Game Developers Conference in Austin, Texas uh, earlier this month as well and there were some interesting discussions and talks that Riot Games were having there for other developers. There was one article that I found which was written by GameSpot and they were talking about uh, one of the discussions that Cadwell was saying about some of the design design decisions within the game and talking about some of the, the missteps they took and how they have kind of uh, put in processes in place to fix those. Some of the interesting ones they were talking about is how uh, it was at first 
hard for them to scrap a character design like they they didn't have anything set in place to say hey this is not good enough we want a 10 we don't want like a 7 you know we don't want a character that's not going to be good enough so they had this one character called Omen that it just wasn't really all that exciting and some of the design uh, it overlapped other champions as well as it uh, wasn't clear if the champion was ranged or melee and they ended up scrapping that one in place of Riven but they they had to put in some kind of thing in place to to make it clear that okay this champion's not good enough scrap it we're gonna you know move on with another decision another one that they were saying that they had was something called what they call like the grand unveil which is where they're talking about uh, they want to look at artists work early on and the artists like well it's not ready yet you know but they are trying to really stress the importance of early iteration since Riot Games is all about iteration. They want to take a look at something and they want to provide that feedback and they want to continue to improve on it. So they had to figure out a way to make it okay for people to show off their early work as just like a crappy first draft. So another one is that uh, another trap that they were falling into is that they had some ideas that were just too awesome to cut, you know, which is typically when somebody uh, had like a really interesting idea that they, they were emotionally attached to, but obviously it just didn't fit into the game and they had some kind of emotional investment to that but nobody wanted to be the buzzkill and tell them no you can't that's not going to go into the game so that's another one of those uh one of those ideas and i think that was uh, for example with shako early on he had some kind of permanent stealth ability and while that was really cool for the person who designed it it's probably obviously a stupid idea because that would just be really ridiculous and things like that and uh another thing is that he mentioned something called creative fatigue being a problem for them, in which case they would have a bunch of designers get together and they would create these big three hour long meetings. And he went on to talk about how the longer the longer you do something like that, the, the worse the ideas get because after a very short amount of time, the creativity does taper off. And I can kind of agree with that being uh, some uh, person that does do some creative stuff myself, I know that whenever I'm inspired to do something, I can do it really quickly. And if I just crunch it all in together in a short amount of time, then I can get it done. But if I spend a really long amount of time trying to put something together, then I really just like lose interest in it and I start to just not really have that good of ideas. So that's some interesting stuff. If you guys want to check out the full article, it's a pretty nice, well-written article. And uh, of course, that'll be in the links down below. But let's move on. Found some other pretty cool videos on YouTube. There was this one uh, music video by a band I actually featured in my last podcast. It's Plant to Kill Again, and this one is Blow Up. So it's another song which is a parody of uh, Kesha's Blow. And so I thought they did a really, really good job on the song. It's really nicely put together. Of course, it does use kind of the same chorus as the actual song, but for the most part, it's pretty nice. So check this one out and see what you guys think. <laughs> Up here, high in the grass, we're ready to gank. We're whooping your butt. Back door, bot lane, teleport up. Back up or not, I'm pushing on stop. It's time to shield myself to dodge a cast and stop. Another really nice video is uh, it's some a new type of video that I haven't actually shown. It's a uh, League of Legends lore in one minute. So for those of you who are not really up to speed or didn't feel like reading all the different lore of League of Legends and what's going on and things like that, there's this new YouTube channel which goes and they do these you know lore in a minute type series on different games. And this one's actually voiced by Total Biscuit, who is a pretty cool gaming commentary guy from the UK. Which uh, you know I've seen some of his stuff. He does a lot of uh, World of Warcraft, and he also does game reviews and things like that on various other games. So de definitely check this out. It's a pretty cool little deal, and I think you guys can get something out. Of Brave champions lead mindless minions to victory and or their death, which are controlled by novice summoners. But let's face it, minions are only there as a source of revenue, so you can rush your trinity force. Even though most disputes are settled on the fields of justice, there are still conflicts over land and whatnot, especially between the Damascene king's son. Jo so that's really it for League of Legends today. I do want to talk about some other things, how. However, uh, not only regarding my channel, but some other games. So right now I'm almost at 50,000 subs. That's so, so exciting. I have to thank everybody who has supported me, especially since the beginning when I was first starting out. You know, my channel, I never really planned on it being what it is now today. I, I had no idea or plans or intentions other than just making some guides. I wanted to originally just make some guides for StarCraft 2 at the time. I was playing some custom maps and I wanted to give people, you know, hey, here's how you beat this map and here's how you do that. 
And then I started playing League of Legends and I was like, hey, I wanted to show people, hey, how do I, how do, how to play my favorite champions? And then, you know, I ended up getting into commentaries and doing all this other stuff. So I, uh, I just want to kind of give you guys some of my future plans for the channel and some stuff that I, I want to continue doing. I'm always going to be a huge fan of League of Legends and I'm always going to support esports. However, you may notice I've been doing some other games as well. Now, I, I always play other games in addition to League of Legends. So a lot of times people are like, hey, Kobe, why aren't you streaming LOL today? Or why aren't you uh, doing more videos on LOL? Well, a lot of times, I've been playing other games, but I realized, you know, why Why not, while I'm playing these other games, why don't I just make some videos on them? So uh, I've been doing all these walkthroughs of Orcs Must Die, for example. I also did some stuff on Diablo 3. So my plans for the future is I, I really want to go out and all these games that I'm going to start playing, I'm just going to make videos of them. I'm just going to do, you know, the playthrough or walkthrough of that game, and I'll just throw it up on my channel for you guys to check out, and maybe you'll find some games that you would like to play as well. So I plan to play some of the upcoming games. There's some really cool upcoming games that, uh, that look exciting to me, and I'll talk about those here in just a little bit, but... Uh, so, so some of my uh, my plans are I'm going to continue doing my little solo queue commentaries on League of Legends. I'm going to be doing my you know first impressions of all the new champions that come out. Every new once in a while, I'll probably do the guides. Those take a lot of work, by the way. When I do a League of Legends guide, I only will do a guide on a champion if it's somebody that I've played a lot and I feel personally that I'm very confident in my ability on that champion. I won't just say, okay, this week I'm going to do it on Galio or something like that and then like try and learn Galio real quick and make a video on it. That's not how I operate. I only want to do a guide that is of high quality that I can, you know, play, you know, 20 plus games on and get all that footage and put it all together. So that's why you don't see a lot of guides for me on those champions. I can easily do those solo queue commentary games where it's me playing through a champion and I can tell you my mistakes and my uh, stuff like that. And I think I'll do a lot more of those. Those are a lot easier for me to do. And if you guys enjoy that, I can definitely do a lot more of those. So, uh, of course, I'll always be doing my podcast. I don't plan to stop doing those. One thing I do plan to cut back on personally is the amount of actual pro commentaries that I do. So I know in September I did about over 50 commentaries and I do want to cut down on that a little bit. However, I still want to commentate. I may be doing some interesting stuff with commentaries here in the future. So uh, you may see some stuff with IPL going down. Uh, that's not official yet. So I'll give you guys some more information once that uh, kind of gets into place. Also, I will be doing some potentially Minecraft stuff once that comes out, once 1.9 is released. I may do like a hardcore playthrough to see how long, how far I can get before I die or something. Um, but anyways, let's, uh, let's just talk about some of the games that are coming up for the holiday season. I did want to mention some of that. So if you are looking forward to games, obviously we just now had Dungeon Defenders released. That's an awesome, awesome game. I'm gonna be going and doing a full playthrough or walkthrough of that game and some of the different classes and whatnot. So I think it's a, a really enjoyable game. I'll give you guys my full rundown of that once I've got some videos out, of course. I'm also going to be playing some Skyrim. So if you have not already seen a lot of the information about Skyrim, I think it's gonna be really fun and it is going to be a little single player game, but I enjoyed playing uh, Oblivion. I never even beat Oblivion, to be honest, but I played it for quite a while. My favorite part of Oblivion was when I went through and played the, I think, the, the Thief and the Assassin um, side missions. I did all of those, but I didn't actually beat the game. So that was like, for me, beating the game was beating those little side areas and then doing like the gladiator stuff. I did all those. I just never beat the main storyline for some reason. So I, I don't even know why. But to be honest, I'm going to be playing through Skyrim. I'll give you guys my play through that. Hopefully you'll enjoy that. I may also pick up Batman Arkham Asylum. The game looks really cool. I, was, I watched a few videos of somebody playing it on the PS3. I don't really plan on picking it up on the PS3. However, I do plan on getting a, uh, a DVR machine or whatever you call it. And I may be doing some playthroughs of, of console games in the future that are you know console only or something like that for example the Uncharted 3 or, or whatever is you know only PS3 that sort of thing so maybe doing some of those also some other cool ones uh, that people are excited about and may not play so for example Star Wars The Old Republic I honestly have no interest in this game I'll tell you why I feel that Star Wars The Old Republic is one of those games where it's just like a clone of World of Warcraft and it's got a big name on it. So that's what they're going to attract people with is, oh, it's a Star Wars game. I mean, if this was, if this had no 
other backing if it was just like some random space game i highly doubt everyone would be as excited about it because to be honest if you take a look at the gameplay the game just doesn't look that exciting and i've talked to a few people who played in the beta and they're like eh, you know combat just feels like world of warcraft basically so to be honest i don't think there's going to be anything like revolutionary about this game and i'm not a big fan of mmos to begin with so I'm not really sure about that. Now, I might try out Guild Wars 2 since everyone is real pumped about it and they're saying, oh, you know, the mechanics are so different. Um, again, though, I'm just not that excited about it. However, you know, maybe I'll check it out for, for a little bit and just give you guys some coverage on it before I stop playing it. Just since everyone has been excited about it, you'll have to give me your thoughts on that one, though. Um, another one, this is kind of really far off and maybe I'm talking about this a little too soon, but did anyone else ever play a game called Prototype? This was on PC and Xbox and PS3, I believe, but it was like a game where you can like, it's kind of open world and you can do all this crazy stuff. Your arm like flies out into a, into like a hook or like a fist that is a big sledgehammer. You can blow up tanks and kill all these dudes and like you can absorb them into you and crazy stuff like that. Man, I don't know, but I freaking loved this game. It was so awesome and I cannot wait for the second one, which is going to be released, I think sometime early next year, actually. Um... I looked at a trailer. You can actually take a look at the trailer for the second one here. I've got a link down in the description below as well. But uh, but yeah, I'm really excited about that game. A little early to talk about it. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I, that's that's really it. I mean, I wanted to to give you that uh, the little bit of an insight of into what I'm doing on my channel with the different videos. So hopefully you're not like too frustrated with this crazy amount of content that I'm released. Sometimes I'm sure people are subscribing they're like, oh man, you're flooding my inbox. And other people are like, oh yeah, give me more more videos. So can't make everyone happy. And But just letting all my League of Legends fans know, yes, I'm going to continue doing League of Legends videos, but on the side, I'm also gonna be doing videos of other games that I enjoy playing because I'm a gamer at heart and I play lots of games. For now though, for the last thing, I want to give you guys this hilarious video of a really, really cool Flash game that I've played a few times called Happy Wheels. I don't know if you've heard of it or not, but it's this awesome game where you're this guy, or you, well, you can pick different characters, but you can be like some guy on a in a wheelchair or somebody riding a bike or something like that, and it's like a physics-based 2D game where you got to get through the end of the level. But anyways, it's, it's just this really funny level where this guy voiced over it um, of what's happening where this guy like gets stuck in this one part. So check this out. It's so funny. Oh, oh, wait, what? What's going on? What? What is it? Oh, oh, my God. Oh, 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 man. What is going on? Oh, oh. Be sure to watch the full video. Check out the link below. Anyways, guys, that's it for today. If you enjoyed watching this podcast as much as I enjoyed making it for you, please hit that like button. It really helps me out. Also, be sure to add this to your favorites. Subscribe if you have not already so you know when my videos are coming out. All right, guys, I'll see you around for the next one. This is Kobe Cheese. Peace out.